where in the Bible that Jesus denies that he is not God? Oh, let me guess. You're going to talk about the story with Jesus and the rich young ruler? Let me ask him a question. If I give you a verse of that, will you become a Muslim today? Talk about a non sequitur. If Jesus really did deny being God, I wouldn't automatically just opt for Islam for a whole host of reasons that I don't have time to get into here. Let's just say I'm not really impressed with your prophet nor your holy book. This is a part of a religion. There's a reason to it. Yeah, there's a reason why there's a capital punishment because people like you, little weaklings who leave their religion and cause uh, corruption in the land by spreading it, the capital punishment in Islamic law would be applied to you. We have no doubt and we're proud of that. Fortunately, Jesus never denied being God as we'll see here in just a second. Yes. Open your Bibles, the book of Luke 18 verse 18. Yep, the story with Jesus and the rich young ruler Boy, I'm shocked. Shocked, I tell you. Jesus denies automatically he's not God. One of the men and the disciples came unto Jesus and said, Good teacher, what shall I do so that I enter paradise? Jesus denies automatically and says, Don't call me good. There is one who is good, and that is God. Okay, so is Jesus denying being God in Luke 18.18? 18? No, not at all. In the four Gospels, we see that Jesus is consistently turning away compliments. For example, according to the Gospel of John, a religious leader named Nicodemus came to visit Jesus by night. Nicodemus tries to sweet-talk Jesus by saying, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one could do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Not having it, Jesus immediately replies in John 3, 3, saying, Most certainly I tell you, unless one is born anew, he can't see God's kingdom. Wow, where exactly did that comment come from? In the same way, in Matthew 8, 19 through 20, a man ran up to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. How does Jesus respond? He says, The foxes have holes, and the birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Again, this remark, seems to come out of left field. Similarly, in Luke 11, 27 through 28, once again, Jesus turns away a compliment. Luke tells us that, as he said these things, a certain woman out of the multitude lifted up her voice and said to him, blessed is the womb that bore you and the breasts which nursed you. How did Jesus respond? He gets a little spicy by saying, on the contrary, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. You just cannot butter up Jesus. So when their rich young ruler comes to Jesus saying, good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus again turns away a compliment. Notice that Jesus never denied being good. He was pointing out that mere human beings are not good. And therefore, since the young man who approached Jesus regarded him as merely a human teacher, he shouldn't have addressed him flatteringly as good teacher. If anything, Jesus' statement in context text implies that Jesus is far more than human since he goes on to summon the young man to follow him in order to be complete. And yet this fact is constantly overlooked by those who claim that Jesus is automatically denying that he is God. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. This casual unity of character of Jesus is found across all four Gospels and across different episodes of his life. This subtle little feature of turning away compliments is probably best explained by the accounts being rooted in real historical episodes involving Jesus of Nazareth. You know, those same Gospels that Muslims are constantly telling us are hopelessly corrupt. Of course, though, this will not stop Muslim apologists from cherry-picking whatever verses they think proves their point. And we're proud of that! 